Welcome and Central REST API, we have Swagger. All right, so let's get started because I do have some pretty cool things to show you. Um, before we begin, uh, this content may contain uh, forward-looking statements regarding future product plans and development efforts, uh, so on and so forth. What, you what this basically means is that I'm not the executive vice president of our product team. Uh, I don't get to make product plans and priority decisions. Um, so product plans and priorities do change, okay? Um, one thing I will tell you, my name is Jason Murphy. I am one of the head nerds here at Enable, um, primarily for our end central product, which I also share with Mark andre and Paul Kelly. Um, I was uh, the technology and security leader at an MSP uh, for a few years. I then left to become a director of managed services for a healthcare verticalized MSP and all in all, I've been using N Central for about a decade now. Okay, so let's get started with N Central and what is Swagger? So first things first, you can't see APIs, right? They're kind of embedded in the background. Um, now with SOAP previously, you would go to the FQDN and in lowercase type in DMS, you would be pre presented with a WSDL or some Java docs and you'd have to kind of translate it and all this other stuff whereby REST APIs are a little bit simpler to understand. Now, this is a Swagger board, um, or what is known as the Open API specification, um, and we're in version one of our API. Um, I'm showing you this in version 23.9, which is not even released yet. Okay, so, but I do wanna kind of get this in front of you so that you have a good idea of how to use this Swagger board. First things first, let's identify what we have so far, all right? We have a scheduled task API that is built in REST. And when I open that up, you have things like code examples or JSON examples, right? And then you can get response codes based on what can happen when you try to talk to that particular API. Now, the good thing here is this scheduled task API is effectively a run script or run automation API. So programmatically, you're gonna be able to tell um, and central, I wanna run an AMP, I wanna run a uh, PowerShell or VBS or a batch file, whatever it may be. Again, you will need to authenticate, right? And there are two forms of authentication. I'm gonna to get to that in just a moment when I click on this authorize button in just a moment. There is a devices API. Obviously, we're gonna be able to pull devices uh, there is information about the API service itself. So you can pull to see the version of the running API service, API health, for example, uh, customers. You know, So when, if you're going to be pulling devices, primarily you also want to segment based on customers, right? So there is a list of customers um, that you can pull and again, device tasks, all right? So these are operations related to retrieving and managing tasks by the device. So this is where you can get information on that as well. Now, first and foremost, I wanna click on authorize because Swagger is interactive, right? You're gonna be able to do API testing through this so that you have a visual understanding of how the APIs interact. Now, first things first is I'm going to copy my JSON web token. And if you're not familiar with the JWT, um, you have to effectively create an API account in N Central. You have to disable MFA on that API account, and then you have to turn it into an API only account. And again, we have videos for that, um, or we have documentation on that as well. So if you wanna come to this particular, create an API only user, and this will walk you through, or you can watch the video. Now, coming back, I'm going to authorize. Now you will see that there's two types of authorization. There is the JWT, and then there is the, what we call bearer token. So there are actually two forms of authentication. Now, depending on the APIs that you're using, you may need to use one or both, okay? And there's gonna be documentation around which ones those are. So first things first, I want to open up this one right here, and that's authenticate. So now that I have that JWT immersed in um, the authorization, 
I can now try it out, scroll down, and now I'm going to execute. From here, I'm going to be presented some information. Now, what it says is, is that my JWT is unauthorized. I remember uh, a little earlier before I recorded this video is um, I had to reset. So I'm going to come back into my users, user management. I'm going to click into my API account. And again, just to quickly walk, walk you through this, you're going to create a, a typical user. Um, and then what you're going to do is give it the necessary administrative access or you know, access to all customers. I'll leave that up to you. Um, but from here, you're going to come into user details and user information, and then you're going to turn off um, two-factor off, and you're going to say MFA not required. However, you're then going to say this is an API-only account, which means nobody can log into it through the Ncentral UI. And then you're going to save, and then you're going to come back into this account and create the JSON web token. So here's mine, and I'm gonna just copy and paste that just so I don't lose it for later. Okay, and I'll click okay. And then I'll come back to here. I'll go all the way up to authorize and I'll log that out. I'll put that back in. I'll authorize again, hit the X. And this time I'll cancel that. I'll try it out and then I'll execute. And then you will see that I have a code of 200. Okay, so that's the server response. Everything's good. You're able to do stuff. So what we have here is the bearer token. Okay, so the JWT, I don't know how many characters that is. Oh, I didn't get all of it. Bear with me for one second here. I'm trying to talk and copy. There we go. So. I'm gonna take that bearer token and I'm going to put it into the next area of authentication. And then I'm going to authorize that. Now, one thing about the bearer token, if I scroll back down, is that there is a time limit. 3,600 seconds is actually 60 minutes, okay? So you have 60 minutes to use this authorization form to be able to interact with the APIs. Now, the good news is, is that there is refresh commands, right? So you can ask for a refresh of that bearer token. Um, and programmatically, you may wanna do that in your scripting as well. Okay, so you have to accommodate for both of those forms of authentication, which is obviously pretty decent security. Now, first things first, when you're looking to um, do something against a device, say run automation in this example, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to customers. First things first, I want to start at a customer. At least that narrows things down. So I'm going to try that out. And then I'm going to look at all of the information. Okay, so successful retrieval. And then I have all of this. So let me just execute and you will see that it is now pulled all of my customers. Okay, now in here, I'm just going to use 218. So I'm going to copy that down because you're going to need that customer ID, 218. And then you can see that there's additional information, you know, uh, Sebastian here uh, under his API account or customer, uh, he is code 220, you know, and then we have Robbie at 221. Now what you're not seeing here right now, only because things are still in flux in terms of development is sites. So that will be coming a little bit later. Now, that being said, let's collapse this because I also wanna get device. So if I come down and I try this out, well, I need a device ID, right? Or at least a customer ID. So if I come back down, I want this one, sorry. I clicked into the whole list. I don't want everything. I just want the device ID. So I'm going to again try that out. And then in here, what I can do is pull the device ID, which was, where are you here? Uh, 
that's not my workstation. I wanted this one. Okay, so my device ID, where is this? Right here. Okay, now I'm gonna copy and paste that into my Notepad++ that is sitting on my other screen because I'm going to need that as well. So now that I have the customer ID and the device ID, I can do some other stuff, right? Like run a scheduled task. Now, before I get into running the scheduled task API, I do want to show you a few things. So if we come into, go into configuration, let me just collapse everything. So there's more real estate in here. So if I come into configuration and then I go into scheduled tasks, the script and software repository, you will notice that we have added two columns. One is you inherently or explicitly is probably the better word, you explicitly need to authorize scripting and in central to work, right? So you have to turn those on. But there is now also a repository ID, okay? So if I come in here and what am I gonna use? Maybe I'll use DNS, something simple, okay? I'll use something like, uh, maybe not DNS, let's find something better. UAC, we'll enable UAC or something. So if we go into here, and I'll grab this particular uh, repo ID and I'll save that for later. And then what I can do is now go, now that I've done this and you can see that I've turned this on, I've already turned these on previously. You may see some of these three digit codes. Now, just to kind of explain is that when we developed this, we did not put in the word to randomize the IDs across all of our Uncentral servers. So inherently, you can't even turn these three digit ones on, at least not yet. But what you can do is if there's a particular one that you want to use that is a, a system level, that you're going to at least come in here under this and scroll to the very right where you can now clone that particular uh, script or automation policy, give it a name. And then if I click save, you will notice now that script has its own, I don't know what I call the test. It's a way, way here in the bottom now, but if I go down to test, where are you? You will see that it has its own 10 digit numeric uh, value, okay? So let's go back up to the API Explorer where I can now open this up. Now I'm gonna try this out, which will now allow me to use this. I'm not executing you just yet but I'm gonna give this a name, just like when you run a job, uh, like a discovery or automation, there's a job that's created. It's kind of like a timestamp. So I'm gonna call it JSON test API scripting. You gotta spell it right though, scripting, there we go. And then I could put the data or something like that if I wanted to. Now. There is the remote execution item ID, which is the repository ID that we just got from the script and software repository. So I'm gonna put that in here, delete that one and put that in. Now the task type, if I go back to in central for UAC, this is an AMP. So what we're going to put here is, if it was a VBS or PowerShell or batch file, you, you can leave that as script. But for an AMP, you do have to put automation policy, one word, okay? Then you have your customer ID. Now, this is pretty simple. I'm just gonna type it in as 218. Then I have my device ID, which is this one right here. I'm copying and pasting that over. So that'll run that on my lab device. And then from here, you can kind of leave things as is. Now, I don't need any input parameters for, for this particular value. So I'm just simply just going to come and delete all of this out. There, okay, we're good. Now, providing that I didn't do any typos or mess anything up, this should simply run the command. Now, let me execute. Okay. Okay, so I got an error response. So I didn't do something right with that one. 
Um, let me try one other one here. Bear with me for one moment. Let me just find it. Do, do, do. I'll just come and try to edit it. What did I do here? Okay, so I should be able to get rid of this. All the way to here. I don't believe I need that comma, but this time I'm gonna try it. Okay, error 400. Well, we're getting closer. Um, let's see what it says. Bad request. Make sure I didn't type something incorrectly or at least invert my um, device ID and my customer ID. So let's just go down and check. So my customer ID for Mustafa one was 219. I put 218, so we'll fix that. You got to check your work, measure twice, cut once, as they say. Okay, so let's back this out. Let's go back into devices. And then I have the device ID, which needs to be fetched. And I want to make sure that's right here. I think it should be this. Let's find out. Yep, yeah, that's right. So at least I got the right uh, device ID. We've got the right customer now, 219. And let's make sure I got the right script and software repository. This looks right to me. All right, so let's just verify everything again. Go back up to the top. I probably just need to change this. So we can just edit this. So if we go to customer ID. Oh, I completely did a four digit. There we go, 219. Still bad request. We just move that there. That looks right to me. And there we go. We got it. Okay. So uh, I had the comma in there. So Again, this is my first day playing with this. Um, I'll perfect it as we go. Now, as you can see, it now told me that um, through the data that I've just executed, it has now given me a task ID. Well, what I can do now as well is verify the task. If you want, you can come down here into API Schedule Task, Task ID, and try that out. And what will this tell me? This is important in terms of overall um, getting response codes and doing things based on what the API is telling you. For example, if you were trying to restart a OneDrive process, right, or, um, or a service, right, you may have to check to make sure that it worked, right? So as you can see here, I've got my task ID, device ID, and then it's saying UAC is enabled, we should be good, okay? Now, that's everything in terms of Swagger so far. More and more APIs are gonna be coming in the weeks and months ahead. So, you know, a bit of, bit of an exciting time here at Enable. Um, really looking forward to working with all of you on all of those APIs that you really want to, you know, touch and hook onto, okay? Again, my name is Jason. Thank you for your time.